In this video, we will discuss Fisher projection formula in detail. Fisher projection formulas were invented by Emil Fisher in 1891. Fisher projections use horizontal and vertical lines to represent the 3D state. The horizontal lines represent bonds pointing out of the plane or towards us, and vertical lines represent bonds pointing out the back of the paper or away from us. The intersection represents the central carbon. These are mostly used in biochemistry and organic chemistry to represent monosaccharides and amino acids because these molecules have so many stereocenters. A stereocenter is an atom, typically a carbon, which has four unique bonds. This carbon is called a chiral carbon. And, if we interchange the position of any two bonds, it will result in the formation of a new molecule. For example, by interchanging hydrogen and OH bonds, glucose becomes galactose. Different monosaccharides are all pretty similar, they are just different about the orientation of the stereocenters. A stereocenter is any atom in a molecule for which exchanging two groups creates a completely different molecule. The Fischer projection allows us to quickly identify each monosaccharide based on the orientation of each atom. There are certain rules to be followed while drawing Fischer projection. Rule 1. Consider a plane having only a chiral center on the plane. Rule 2. Rotate the molecule so that all the horizontal bonds must be towards the observer and vertical bonds must be away from the observer. Now, let us discuss drawing Fischer projection using an example. Consider a simple molecule with a tetrahedral shape called D-glyceraldehyde with molecular formula C3H6O3. If we observe all the carbon atoms, the second carbon is connected with four unique bonds, so the second carbon is the chiral center of the molecule. And its three-dimensional representation is shown as the first step is to rotate the molecule in such a way that the first carbon should be at the top and second carbon in the middle and the third carbon at the bottom. Or simply, it can also be shown as like this. Which looks like a tetrahedral. Assume a plane that only contains the chiral carbon on the plane and the bonds are not on the plane. Now, we need to hold the molecule in a way that the horizontal bonds, hydrogen, and OH are towards the observer, and the vertical bonds, CHO and CH2OH, are pointing away from the observer. This view can be represented using wedge formula as shown. Here, the two horizontal bonds are drawn as solid wedges, and the vertical bonds are drawn as broken wedges. As we know that, the projection of these bonds just follows the projection of a line in mathematics. So, according to Fischer projection formula, the wedges are projected onto the paper with horizontal and vertical lines. According to Fischer projection, central carbon can be replaced with the crossing of lines. The vertical lines are considered to be the bonds away from the observer or project below the plane of paper. The horizontal lines are considered to be the bonds nearer to the observer or project above the plane of paper. This is how we can easily draw Fischer projection. Converting from wedge to Fischer projection. If we were given a molecule with the wedge formula, as if two bonds are in the plane of the paper and one bond is above the plane and the other is below the plane. Then, how to draw the Fischer projection? The given projection is not according to the Fischer projection as the Fischer projection needs only chiral carbon on the plane of paper and two bonds should be towards the observer and two bonds should be away from the observer. So, to convert this wedge formula to Fischer, we have the only choice to rotate the molecule as per the Fischer requirement. But, rotating the molecule might go wrong as it is a two-dimensional representation of the molecule. So, we can't rotate the wedge formula directly, we have the only option to change the position of the observer. Now, let us assume the observer standing perpendicular to the plane of the paper is shown. If the observer sees the molecule in this direction, the two horizontal bonds, A and B, are towards the observer, 
that is, parallel to his hands. And the other two bonds will be away from the observer, that is, D along his head, and the C along his legs. Now, the Fisher projection can be drawn as, both B and A, are drawn left-hand side and right-hand side horizontal lines, respectively. The D is drawn along his head, and C is drawn along his legs. Till now, we have discussed a simple molecule, having three carbon atoms in the molecule. Let's see the drawbacks in Fischer projection. If we have a molecule that contains more than three carbon atoms, that is, more than two stereocenters, then it is not possible to orient the molecule in space so that all horizontal bonds will be slanted towards the observer. For example, let us consider a complex molecule, D-glucose, which is represented as if we rotate the molecule so that horizontal bonds with C2 are slanted towards the observer, then the horizontal bonds with C3 are slanted away from the observer. So, after drawing the bonds with C2, the molecule should be rotated 180 degrees about its vertical axis before drawing the bonds with C3. To complete the drawing, we need similar rotations. Because of the repeated rotations, the original positions of horizontal bonds will be altered. So, the Fischer projection can be considered as an accurate representation of the actual 3D structure. It can be regarded as a projection of a modified version of the molecule, ideally twisted at multiple levels along its backbone. Let's see the limitations of Fischer projection. Let us take the Fischer projection formula we have discussed earlier. Rule 1. The Fischer projection is a two-dimensional perspective, so we cannot rotate this by 90 degrees in a plane. The result will not be equal to the original molecule. Rule 2. The Fischer projection can be rotated 180 degrees in plane, the result will be equal to the original molecule. Rule 3. The Fischer projection can be rotated 180 degrees out of plane. Rule 4. In a Fischer projection, we can't exchange one molecule with another molecule. But, it accepts the exchange in a group of three molecules. In this video, we have discussed Fischer projection formula in detail.